Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. My website's jasonburnspreacher.com and you can get me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I just watched a video tonight uh, concerning uh, Bob the Builder. Uh, he's a Christian debater at Hyde Park and uh, Paul Williams on the resurrection, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. Now, this is a topic that I've specialised in for about five to seven years. Uh, it's a topic that I, I specialise in, in debate. So, this is one of the major works on the resurrection of Christ. And annually, uh, I read this book um, and constantly doing research and uh, scholarship. On the resurrection of Christ and I'm always trying to keep up to date uh, on the topic so I've debated quite a few uh, people on the resurrection death and resurrection of Christ um, some famous atheist and uh, uh, one particular well-known famous uh, Muslim apologist in Hyde Park Mansour um, so this is like a topic that I know quite well, basically, um, and that I specialise in, in debating. So my observations in the debate with uh, Paul Williams and um, and um, Bob the Builder, as he's, as he's known, it's on Soku's uh, channel and a few other channels, uh, Islamic channels. Um, basically, Paul's main argument is that uh, the religion of Paul is not the religion of Jesus and that there was a difference on the interpretation of law and so therefore Paul was not telling what Christianity was all about. He'd invented kind of Christianity in his own image. It was not the teaching of Jesus. And then the second argument was basically concerning that Paul had um, a belief that it was a spiritual Jesus, not a physical resurrection. Um, <clears throat> so, that's a couple, so, that's, so that was his basic main argument, and Bob the Builder's argument was an argument from community. Um, it seemed what he was saying is the community, the early community before Paul's letters were saying that Jesus rose again. Uh, and it, it seemed to be kind of, uh, kind of a Catholic view, I'm not a Catholic view, um, rather than a Protestant evangelical view. I don't know whether he is Catholic or not, but he wasn't arguing from what the Bible said or even any historical data with outside the Bible, he was mainly arguing from community, what the community said. Um, so my thoughts on the debate, um, this idea that uh, Paul taught differently from Jesus is, is basically irrelevant concerning the debate between that Jesus died and rose again because um, it's not first of all a theological issue in terms of historical inquiry it's a historical issue and what he's doing is he's using theology as his way of interpreting history and using that as his main method uh, so for example the quran has one view and so in order to try to prove that jesus didn't die and rise again that theological view of the Quran is being imposed on his understanding of it, of who Christ is and, and what Paul taught. Um, now, that's okay to, to do that so long as you acknowledge your theological bias. You know, we all have bias, Christians have bias and, and, and Muslims have bias. We all have bias in our historical inquiry. Uh, so long as we acknowledge that bias, um, but even if we acknowledge that bias, the Quran as a bias is not really a book that you could really engage with historically. It's not got a lot of historical material in. 
the material that's in there is often uh, inaccurate and borrowed from other sources that are not accurate as well so there's uh, infant gospel narratives that are not historically accurate that they, the, the Quran borrows so, so when Paul is saying that there's a difference between Paul's Paul Williams is saying there's a difference between Paul and Jesus' theology, therefore Jesus couldn't have died and rose again because Paul says that, but Paul, the Apostle Paul is saying it's different from Jesus. Uh, sorry, uh, Paul Williams is saying that the Apostle Paul is teaching things that are different from Jesus. Um, it's coming, Paul Williams is coming from a theological bias rather than actually doing proper historical inquiry. And yet he claims to be doing history. Um, now, Christians have a bias. We all we have a bias. But this book, uh, for example, tries to use secular historical method. And even if we acknowledge our bias, the Gospels and Paul's letters are helpful historical data. Much better because they're earlier source material than the the Quran. So our bias actually isn't a problem because our foundation documents are very historically reliable, whereas the Quran is not. So we have to look at our bias. Uh, the Christian looks at the world from Christian glasses, the Muslim looks at it from Muslim glasses, the atheist looks at it from atheist glasses, and if we acknowledge our bias, we have to look at which bias are best, and our bias is better than the Islamic bias, because our bias our historical doc our documents like the Gospels are better historical material than say the Quran which comes 600 years after so Paul Williams is not being honest about his bias secondly um, Paul Williams when he talks about Paul it was a spiritual resurrection that Paul saw first of all in uh, the book of Galatians Paul mentions that he Paul, the Apostle Paul mentions he met the other Apostles they believed in a physical resurrection and they confirmed the resurrection with Paul. So again, it was not just a physical, uh, not just spiritual, it was a physical resurrection of Christ that Paul believed in. If you read Romans 6, Paul clearly states that Christ died and rose again, physical, not, not spirit, spiritual. And if you go to 1 Corinthians 15, where it talks about the body sown in the spiritual, it's not actually on about... Uh, matter as in spirit it, it's talking more as in a new body that is spiritual but it is a physical body so you can't use that to argue that Paul believed in a spirit but he, he believed in a physical spiritual resurrection and Paul came from the Pharisee tradition and so it was very clear in his teaching when you look at it it's confirmed by the other apostles it's confirmed by Romans 6 and Romans 5, that it was physical death and resurrection, and Roman, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, so this spiritual argument that Paul didn't see Christ as physical, but it was a spiritual it was a spiritual thing, a spiritual, like a ghost kind of body, is it cannot be substantiated from the wider corpus of Paul's letters. Um, I thought Bob the Builder's argument uh, was an interesting argument. Um, I think it would cause him problems if Muslims pushed back and thought critically about what he was saying. Um, but I don't know if the Muslim, Muslims will have the sense to be able to analyse what, uh, uh, what Bob the Builder was saying. But um, I would have just stated quite clearly that let's look at this from a historical point of view what is your methodology and I would have asked Paul Williams what is your historical method because Paul Williams never stated that there are various criteria for ascertaining what happens in history and no criteria was given secondly the next thing that I would have stated is then I would have gone on to the secular historical material that we have which is about Josephus and about uh, Tacitus, which they say Jesus died under Pontius Pilate. And there's other historical data, such as Pliny's letter, that shows that the Christians were worshipping Jesus, uh, a resurrection Christ. So there's historical data, 
outside the Bible that verifies the Bible on the death and resurrection of Christ. And then I would have gone on to the new research that's been done the last eight years concerning the actual um, te eyewitness testimony that is in the Gospels and in, 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 in the early church, which has been done by scholars like Richard Balcombe. And um, has not been refuted by Bart Ehrman uh, properly in, in Bart Ehrman's work. So that's how I would have dealt with it. Um, so... Yeah, so as far as I'm concerned, uh, at Hyde Park, um, when it comes to arguing for the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Muslim Dawa teams down there at Hyde Park, are they're not even in the game. They've not won any d real debates in that area. They're not really scholarly, up to date. And... Uh, you know, Christianity has held the ground at Hyde Park. And again, I would just say to anybody who goes down to Hyde Park, and I keep saying this, so many Christians are going down there and you're not going prepared. You need to go and be prepared. I was watching one guy debate uh, Hamza, which I'm going to get on to in a minute. But there was lack of, there was no preparation. And these guys, you're going into a burr pit at Hyde Park. It's a burr pit. They're there to tear you apart. They have questions that they're going to use to open you up and to critique you and to take you down. And so many Christians go down there and they don't go researched and prepped to, uh, or, or with any research. If you're going to talk to Hamza, do some research on Hamza. If you're going to talk to Mansour, do some research on Mansour. If you're going to debate any of these people down there, you need to do research on them and think about what they're saying and then find the answers to what they're saying okay so when if I go down there and I debate Paul Williams on the on the resurrection of Christ I'm going prepped I, I prepped myself I'll continue to prep myself I'm already well researching the topic but I'll continue to research I'll continue to study and then when I get to Paul Williams I'd find out what he's thinking what he's saying what are resources and I'm ready to engage with him but I'm not going to go down there to Hyde Park into a burr pit where where Paul Williams and any Muslim apologist is ready to rip you apart it's unwise to do so you need to prep and pray if you, if you feel called to go down there and I, I keep seeing it time and time again even now and I'll keep saying it until it gets on don't go to Hyde Park unless you've done your preparation. Know your enemy. When you get into a debate, find out as much as you can about the methodology and about what they're saying and find the best scholarship that you can find that will critique what they're saying. And go down with a few notes so that if they ask you questions, you can answer their questions, okay? When I go down to Hyde Park, I do my preparation. I prepare myself meticulously. I pray, I study the Bible, but I prepare myself meticulously. And anybody I take down there, I encourage them, Mike and anybody else, when we go down there, I press the point to Mike and to anybody else who comes with me, I try to press the point that we go down and we are prepared. Okay, so no, and the, I've seen street preachers who think it's good to just go for a day down to Hyde Park and they go for a day thinking it's a nice day out and they go down there and they get shown up they, they get shown to be fools because you, you, you just you're going you, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into you're going into a bear pit it's like you jumping in to an arena of ten fierce bears and you go in and you've got no weapons and no armor, you've got no shield, you've got no sword, you've got nothing and you just jump in and you think you can fight ten bears. Without a sword, without a shield, without any preparation. And, and what if you jumped into a, a, a pit with ten bears and five gladiators and you've done no training as a gladiator and you're in a bear pit with ten bears and five gladiators you'd be a fool to do so and 
so many Christians are being foolish by going down there and arguing and not doing any research. And the other thing as well, we're not going down there to argue. We're going down there to win souls, to bring people to Christ. So you're better off helping Godwin or Lizzie or or any of the one Bob the Builder, any of the ones that go down there regularly who, who are trained, who, are, who have done some training, done some preparation, you're better off going standing with them and in helping them and supporting them rather than you getting yourself involved in a debate that you're not prepared for and you make yourself look foolish and you're not getting the gospel across and it's not a proper debate, you're just arguing and it's, and it's not edifying. You're better off going with people who can debate and discuss and they do it in an edifying way and stand with them, learn from them and, in, and encourage them. And also, people who are down there to continue to work together, support each other, those who are debating, it's great to see Lizzie and Bob the Builder and others, Godwin and others and Daniel, everybody's working together, people work together, it's just amazing to see that and it's encouraging them. And also new Christians down there, people need to look out for the young Christians to make sure that they're not surrounded by people like Mansoor and, and, and stand with the young Christian to help them. But you young Christians and Christians going down there, you, you need to be wise. You need to back off and let the, let the ones who have prepared themselves debate. Or go and stand and support the preachers who are preaching. There's a quite a few good preachers down there and they're really good preachers. Go and support them. But don't be foolish as to think that you can go into the midst of a burr pit and feel that you can go in there with no preparation and not come out unscathed because it is it is a very very specialized and difficult task to do like I said I, I keep going on about this but I spend when I go down to Hyde Park I spend at least two full days full days from nine o'clock in the morning till twelve o'clock at night studying and praying studying and praying so for two days solid I'll listen to the Hamza or I'll listen to whoever I feel I might bump into. I'll listen to what they've got to say. I'll make notes. I'll listen to their debates. I'll go and read the literature. I'll go and read my Bible. I'll go and pray. And, and by the time I get to Hyde Park, I'm prepped. I'm ready. And when I go down there, I'm going down there on the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going down there guided by the Holy Spirit. I'm going down there not to argue but I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to guide me into conversations so that my conversations are fruitful rather than getting into a situation where I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm just arguing and it's, and it's, and it's coming to a, a situation where it's not edifying. And it takes time to learn these things. It, I, I, you know, it's took me time to learn to, to ride on the Holy Spirit in these situations. But my friend, please, as young Christians, it, it grieves me and it grieves many people around the, world, around the world and the country when we see on YouTube young Christians and Christians going down to Hyde Park and, and crossing swords with Hamza and uh, Mohammed Hijab and, and Paul Williams and you cross swords with these people and you're not gone with any preparation. It's crazy. Prepare yourself. Go down with some notes <laughs> and stick to the topic that you've gone to talk about. Otherwise, you're just going to be taken down. And just spend time talking to people who really want to know Jesus. Talk to them and then go and support the debaters. Go and support those who are preaching and learn how to deal with this. Learn about that environment because it's a very, very tough environment. And I just want to say to any preachers out there, street preachers or preachers, you think, oh yeah, we'll go down to Hyde Park, we'll get some exposure uh, and people will see us down there and it's gonna be, yeah, we'll just go and preach. It, I just want to say it's, it's not a place to go unless, you, unless you're called to go. It's not an edifying place to go unless you're really called to go and unless, you go in the power of the Holy Spirit because 
If you go in the flesh there, it will be exposed. It, it, it's a very, very tough environment. So as street preachers, you need to pray. And preachers, you need to pray, does God really want you to go? And if you do go, you need to really, really, before you engage, just watch what's going on. Spend time seeing what's happening. Get a feel for the situation. And then ease yourself in. Learn from the preachers that are down there. There's some really good preachers that have been doing it for years. Stand with them. Learn from them. There's some really good debaters that have been doing it for a while. Go and watch the Christian debaters and stand with them and learn what's happening. And support them and talk to anybody who really wants to know about Jesus. But don't go down there as a street preacher or preacher and think you can just take them on. Because you can't. It will not happen. You will not be given the chance to. Uh, the guy from Canada who came down, uh, Pastor Lynn, he shook the place up. God used him to shake the place up. But he was a, he was a very experienced person who dealt with Muslims for years. He knew how to deal with Muslims. He'd had a lot of experience in debating. He had a lot of experience in preaching. He also did research before he came to Hyde Park about Hyde Park. He'd watched the videos and he did research as to where they were at. So when he came down, he knew what he was going to do when he got there. He didn't go down just blindly. He did his research on Hyde Park and then he thought, right, that's the way they are. But this is my game plan. This is what I'm going to do. But he also went with a lot of experience behind him. But yet I've seen preachers, street preachers and evangelists around the country and they think, they, right, we'll just have a day out at Hyde Park. You go down there and you bump into Mansour, you bump into uh, Hamza and you get, you, get, you get shown up for, not, for being an ignoramus but not knowing the topic that you're talking about because you just went there without any preparation. So I'm very, very passionate because I really want people to honour the Lord down there. And, and there's some really good things happening down there. There's some good people who are, who are debating down there. There's some good preachers down there. But I'm really passionate in trying to encourage people who do go down there to make sure that you are prepared. Um, I'm trying to spend time uh, reading and researching at the moment. We have a possible plan to come down to Hyde Park. Mike wants to come down to Hyde Park, so we might make an appearance before Christmas. We might not, but we might do. Uh, so, But generally, I want to spend the winter researching and studying, but I hope to be back at Hyde Park uh, after Christmas sometime, late, maybe early in, the, late in the, sorry, early in the new year, maybe February or March. I hope to be back there and debating and preaching. But at the moment, I just feel it's time to take some time out from going to Hyde Park. Um, so that's where I'm at. And I'm just passionate because I want to encourage you to be the best that you can be when you go down to Hyde Park. All right. Don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. And uh, any Muslim apologist, uh, any university, anywhere in the country, you want to debate me and did Jesus die and rise again? Get in touch with me. I'm willing to come to your campus, university, college, uh, or town or city. And I'm willing to debate any Muslim scholar out there in the country of the UK or anywhere in, around the world. Um, but few will actually physically debate me because people don't like the truth being ex uh, false of being exposed. And they don't like to hear the truth. But uh, yeah, so Paul Williams... It was a pretty, pretty dismal performance, really. Uh, the guy regards himself as a scholar. Uh, it was nice to see him being a lot, lot nicer in this debate than he normally is. And I was quite moved by that. He was quite nice. Uh, but in terms of his performance in his debate, in actually what he said, uh, it was quite disappointing. Um, I think also Bob... The builder could have done a lot better by using um, the minimal facts methodology uh, in the defense of the death and resurrection of Christ. 
Okay, God bless you and thank you for listening. Take care.